Dear real lovers, welcome back to Railways Explained. In this video, which will be somewhat different from the previous ones, we are talking about our six-day trip to Warsaw in Poland, where we attended an excellent conference called Railway Direction Days 2023 in the organization of the Centralny Port Komunikacini, or CPK. What was the conference all about, as well as what is CPK, you will find out soon. Anyway, as we promised, this and most likely the next video will be comprehensive trip and conference reports, which is something that we are doing for the very first time on the channel and we hope that we will manage to share with you at least some of our experiences from this memorable journey. Namely, we began our trip on Tuesday, 17th January at 5 am from Belgrade. We arrived in Warsaw at 10 am the next day via Budapest Keleti and Vienna Hauptbahnhof. In the meantime, we used a van, changed a few long distance trains, saw the metro and the urban rail systems in Vienna and Warsaw, and we even experienced evacuation from the station in Vienna due to a false bomb alert. It was not easy, there were several delays and almost missed connections, but on the other hand, we met some amazing people gained some new perspectives and knowledge, visited Technical Museum of Poland, had some great food, especially in Warsaw, and many others. At the conference we had the opportunity to hear many interesting railway stories, to get to know the STH project better, but also we managed to do our very first interview for the channel with the CPK CEO. Also, one of us even had the honor to participate as a moderator in one of the panel discussions on the topic of innovations in rail. We have so much to say and we hope we will manage to do it. We must say again, this is the first time we are doing something like this, so we really hope you'll enjoy it. First of all, we must say that unfortunately we weren't able to realize this journey exclusively by train as there is no rail service at the moment connecting Belgrade and Budapest. The reason for that is the modernization works that are taking place on both Serbian section from Novi Sad to Subotica as well as from Kelebia to Budapest on the Hungarian side. After this project is completed, passenger trains between these two cities and countries will run at speeds up to 200 km per hour. Anyway, our journey began at about 5.20 am when our van with the three of us and one additional passenger departed Belgrade. It was raining, it was dark, we were still sleepy, but also excited and determined to make this trip successful, but also to make enough footage to make this story and share it with you. If you want more similar actions from us in the future, let us know in the comments when you finish watching this video. After approximately two hours of we would say fast and furious drive by our driver, we made a break on some gas station, near the town of Subotica in the northern Serbia. Some of us here had breakfast, some of us were taking video footage, and all of us had coffee. After some 30 minutes we were back on the road, and before 8 o'clock we were at the border with Hungary. It is border crossing Horgos 2, and to a big surprise to us, there were no waiting lines. On the border between Serbia and Hungary, usually you have to wait in line for 30 minutes or 1 hour, but it's not strange if the waiting is longer than 2 or even 3 hours. However, this time we were in Hungary after only 10 to 15 minutes, and by the windows we could still see the recognizable crop fields and flat terrain, as is the case in the Serbian region of Vojvodina. Now it was already sunny, there were lots of trucks on highway, but no traffic jams. The van made its way north smoothly. At exactly 9.46 we reached the Budapest Keleti railway station, which was our first destination after one hour of exhausting drive through the city. My name is Miloš, this is Miki and this is Bojan. Together we are Railways Explained team and as you might know, we are today on our way to Warsaw where we are going to attend the Railway Direction Days 
Railway Conference, which is taking place on 18th and 19th January. So basically, we this morning started our journey from, from Belgrade at maybe 5 a.m. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take the train from Belgrade to Budapest as the modernization works are ongoing on the section from Novi Sad to Subotica in Serbia, so there is no direct service to Budapest. But uh, we are now, in maybe a few hours, going to take a train towards Vienna. And uh, basically we are going to spend night in Vienna and then tonight around 10 p.m. we are taking a train towards uh, Warsaw, where we are going to be around 10 a.m. in the next morning. Uh, so basically our idea is to try and to give our best to expand the content on our channel by making some trip reports, maybe do some interviews if there is a chance. So in that sense, this is going to be our attempt to, to achieve that goal. So right now we are going to take a little tour around the station to check if something interesting is going on, if there are any trains or whatever. So please come with us. At this point, we are making a tour around and inside the station. Maybe it's a good moment to get all technical, as we usually are on this channel, and discuss for a bit about the Keleti station. So, Budapest Keleti is actually a major railway station in Hungary. The station was designed by Gila Rochlitz, while Janos Feketehazi designed the impressive art train shed. The construction of the station began in FAR 1881 and it was completed by 1884. The Keleti station was built to symbolize the Austro-Hungarian Empire's national unity and modernization. The central main facade is adorned with statues depicting James Watt, the steam engine inventor, and George Stevenson, the designer of the rocket steam locomotive. As you might know, he is also known as the father of railways. The station has 13 tracks with platforms numbered from 1 to 13 from left to right. Platforms 6, 7, 8 and 9 are the most important and longest and located in the center inside the arched train shed. Platforms 1 to 5 are outside the main train shed on the north side and platforms 10 to 13 are also outside but on the south side. Inside the station there are two main halls, Lodz Hall and South Hall. The first is the main hall and serves as the main entrance and exit of the station. It is named after the German painter Karoli Lotz, who painted some really breathtaking frescoes that beautify the walls of this hall. South Hall on the other side is a smaller hall that serves as the entrance and exit for the suburban trains. Outside is the terminus for the buses that connect this station with the rest of the city. The first class business lounge at Budapest Keleti is typically available for passengers with first class tickets or who have purchased access to the lounge as an additional service. Also, there is sufficient number of different kinds of shops and bakeries, displays for departing and arriving trains, ticket machines, etc. Outside, we've also noticed bicycle station, where you can simply switch from train to bike and become multimodal. Also, we have to say some parts of the facade of the station building don't look quite representative and seem ready for some refurbishment. What is important to also say, the station is served by metro lines 2 and 4. To reach the metro, just walk out of the front of the station and go down the steps to the metro station. After this tour, we wanted to have coffee in some nearby cafe. And on our way back, we decided to have some lunch in one Turkish restaurant just on the other side of the station. It was about 1 pm. When we came back to the station, we saw on display that our train was late. Its time by the timetable should have been 2.40, but it departed at 3.12. It's Eurocity 146 going from Cluj Napoca in Romania via Budapest Keleti to Vienna Hauptbahnhof, better known as Transylvania. It is operated by Romanian CFR, Hungarian MAV Start and Austrian OBB. With this train it takes approximately 7 hours from Cluj to Budapest 
an additional 2 hours and 40 minutes to reach Vienna. We've been in a second class wagon for 12, we had reservations for seats 21, 22 and 23 and our ticket price was approximately 23 euros per person, reservation included. Regarding the composition, train had two second-class Romanian wagons B11, as we understood, modernized in 2015 and 2016, and four Hungarian ones, of which two are second-class BMZ, one first-class AMZ, and one restaurant car, in which we had some excellent espresso. In charge of the traction was the famous MAV 480. The train was overall clean, the quality ok but not so great, as for example some seats were broken. There was no Wi-Fi, but anyway, at this point we were quite tired. However, we used to take some footage, check out the whole composition and discuss the concept of this video. That's when we visited the restaurant car and had amazing 1 euro coffee. Unfortunately, there wasn't so many passengers in the train. At about 5.45 we arrived in Vienna, with 24 minutes of late. Our first impression for the station was this is quite big and amazing railway station. Our dear friend Rafa, who is originally from Spain but lives in Vienna, was waiting for us, with the idea to take us to one of the nearby restaurants and introduce us to his colleagues. At this point we had no time to take a detailed tour around the station, but we did it later. Anyway, we took the metro and went two stations away, to the Pointers pub. That's where we met Rafa's colleagues and friends and had some quite insightful conversations about, you guess, railway topics. We were all inspirational and how could we not be with such a great sweet beer and spicy burgers. Unfortunately, around 9 pm we had to go back to the station as our train is scheduled for 10 minutes after 10. When we got back on the station, we saw on display that our train to Warsaw is one hour late, so we had no option but to wait. We now had plenty of time to get to know the station better, check out its structure and organization and also to take some footage. With this much space on several levels, so many shops, restaurants and different information displays and ticket offices, the station looks indeed impressive maybe one of the most impressive we've ever saw. Let's again get all technical for a minute. Vien Hauptbahnhof, also known as Vienna Main Train Station, is the main railway station in Vienna in Austria. The station is located in the city's heart and serves as a hub for national and international trains. The station is operated by the Austrian Federal Railways and is one of the busiest railway stations in Europe. It serves around 250,000 passengers daily. The current Wien Bank of building was opened fully in 2015 after 8 years of construction. It replaced the old station which was in operation since 1838. The new building is a modern multi-level structure with a sleek glass and steel design. The station's design also features extensive on-site retail opportunities including a 20,000 square meter shopping center positioned below track level, which accommodates around 100 shops and restaurants, and an on-site underground car park with spaces for up to 600 cars and over 1100 bicycles. The total cost of building the new station has been stated to have been almost 1 billion euros. The station has two platforms underground for S-Bahn service, while the remaining 10 platforms are located on the bridge structure above ground and served by mainline domestic and international trains. To facilitate a high rate of pedestrian movement across the station, a total of 29 escalators and 14 elevators are present to provide full step-free access to all areas. On the top of the escalators on each platform, as a summary of departures, there's a screen showing train formations for upcoming departures from that platform. Each platform is divided into zones A, B, C, D and E, with A at the west end and E at the east end. This station is also a stop for the U1 of the Vienna U-Bahn metro system, making it easy for passengers to travel to other parts of the city. Vien Hauptbahnhof is served by many train lines, including the high-speed railjet trains, which connect Vienna to other major cities in Austria, as well as to cities in Germany, Switzerland and Hungary. 
The station is also served by international trains, including the Euronight trains, connecting Vienna to cities in other European countries. After this tour, we were casually waiting for our delayed train in one of the waiting areas, when at about half past 10 we've noticed something strange. The police and the station staff started to gather in unusually high numbers inside the station. Also, there were some police officers with searching dogs. We could sense that something is about to happen. Not more than few minutes afterwards, one of the police officers approached our waiting area and kindly informed us that we all should immediately leave the station. On our question what is going on, he just said that he can't tell us the reason and that we must follow the protocol. So we did. We went outside, as did maybe more than a hundred people who have been in the station at that moment. We weren't sure what is happening, but we all could with quite certainty guess that it is all about supposed tip or bomb alert. What we were sure about is that this is going to be a long night. From the other side of the street we were looking how the police puts the tape around the station and with more and more police vehicles and stuff coming to the station, the situation looked serious. Speaker also announced that all trains for all destinations are suspended until further notice. After almost one hour standing there in cold, seeing that many people have already left the scene, we decided that we have no choice but to spend some unplanned money and take one of the nearby hotels. The night in the first hotel that we managed to find was about 93 euros per person as it only had single bedrooms available at the moment. Before checking in, we decided to have some beer in the hotel's bar, just to think it through and maybe find some cheaper option. We sat there until one of us, me, decided to have a cigarette outside the hotel and maybe take a casual walk back to the station out of curiosity just to check out what's going on. It was about 15 minutes to midnight when I managed to come close to the station and exactly at that moment I saw the policeman removing the tape that was put around the station. Dozens of most persistent passengers were still near the station, but it seemed like the station check is complete and that station might be open again. That was exactly the case and I was among the first few passengers to enter the station. Not wanting to be a hero exploring the station with potential hidden explosive, I just wanted to see the closest information display and go out. When I did see it, I had what to see the train to Warsaw arriving in 15 minutes. At about minute or two after midnight we were on the platform and our train arrived only a few minutes later. This time we were using Intercity 456-406 Night Jet Chopin, traveling from Graz Hauptbahnhof via Vienna, Břeclav, Ostrava, Katowice and Krakow to Warsaw Gdańska. We were accommodated in the sleeping berth in the wagon 358. We had tiny but cozy apartment with three beds, which costed us 257 euros in total. We are not sure about the exact composition of the train, as we were too tired to take a detailed tour and had no time to do it on the platform, but from what we managed to find subsequently, this train earlier included one sleeper wagon and one second class B11 from Vienna, similar pair of direct wagons from Budapest, as well as five second-class B-wagons from Bohumin, from Intercity 406, of which two were Czeske Drahi from Praha and the remaining Polish PKP. Lokomotiv was EU44 Hussage or Siemens Eurosprinter. Also, our sleeping wagon had shower on one side, even though we did not realize that timely, as we used only the toilet on the side that was closer to our compartment. Our compartment was neat and cozy, but really a bit small for the three grown-ups. A kind suggestion to manufacturers from the Railways Explained team would be that it's not all about fitting as many compartments as possible in a single wagon, there's also something about comfort. On the other side, in the cabinet, we've got some water, juice and a meal, consisting of bread, butter and jam. And after a brief summarizing of impressions, we felt asleep. At about 9.10 the next morning, some 30 minutes before the arrival to Warsaw Gdańska station, 
our kind host of the train woke us up and brought us some coffee. That's a standard part of the service. As scheduled arrival was 9.8, we arrived some 52 minutes after the timetable. We were indeed happy to be there. We checked out the station quickly, took some photos and even we saw the pandolino. It is a train used for the intercity services to and from the largest Polish cities, such as Warsaw, Krakow, Gdynia, Katowice, Reszow and Wrocław. Then we went to the nearby metro station. Our goal at this point was to reach the Chopin airport as soon as possible, because the hotel where we are staying and also the conference is taking place is located just there. Also at this point the conference has already begun and practically we are late. Nonetheless we are discovering the metro station Warszawa Gdańska, ready to use the metro line 1 to the station Warszawa Srodmieszcie, where we are planning to switch to urban rail SKM line S2 on our way to the airport. While you are enjoying the footage from the stations and trains we've used, we can say that at that moment we already felt in love with Warsaw, not only because the public transport seemed so good, but because the city itself with its spacious streets and central New York-like skyscrapers seemed fantastic. The public transportation in Warsaw is, we could say, quite affordable, especially compared to some other countries, and it amounts to 7 zloty or 1.5 euros per person for 90 minutes of travel regardless of whether you are taking the metro, light rail, bus, trolley or tram. Finally, after more than 30 hours at about 11.30 we reached our hotel, 